All right, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, look at that. Brand spanking new. Well, I got the Kenwood THD75, and this radio has been pretty cool so far. I've had it about two days at the time of this recording, and I'm liking it quite a bit. There's not a lot of difference between it and its predecessor, the D74. It does do a few more things that the that the D74 didn't do, but I tell you this right now. I've already tried this. I tried to back up all my memories on an SD card with the D74 and then take that SD card out of the D74 and load it in, into the D75, and it says, no file found. So I could not do that. So I backed it up successfully, successful backup on the D74, no file found with that same SD card on the D75. So I was hoping I'd be able to transfer my memories over, my repeater channels I've saved, my contacts and whatnot. It has a thing for transferring like D star contacts. I didn't have any of that stuff, but I had a bunch of memory channels saved on the D74, which are still there. Doesn't seem to be an easy way to transfer it. I also have not downloaded the programming software for this radio yet. This video you're watching right now will premiere the day before Orlando Hamcation. So while I'm at Orlando Hamcation, I'm recording this a few days prior, I'm going to look for a, K, a programming cable for this radio and see if we can get to... I, I, it's just a standard K connector on the side. So I think you could probably use like the standard Anytone cable or just any standard Kenwood K connector cable. This is a Kenwood radio using a Kenwood cable. What a concept. I don't know. I don't know if it requires an FTDI chip or a prolific chip or no chip at all. So we're going to get to that uh, eventually. But today I wanted to show you guys really, really what I want to show you is I want to do a comparison here between... The D74, which is right here on the left, turn that on, okay, and the D75, which is, of course, on the right. Now, well, let's go around it first, okay? I lost my Kenwood antenna a long time ago. I actually lost it in the hotel room, and I'm planning on taking uh, the D75 with me this weekend to Orlando Hamcation, so I hope I don't lose my antenna this weekend in a hotel room in Orlando, but uh, we'll see. This is the Smiley antenna, and this is pretty cool because it's the extendable antenna, and it's one of their antennas that they recommend for a, for a tri-band radio because you can adjust the length of it for different uh, bands and whatnot. There's not really a meter on the radio to tell you if it's resonant on 2 meters to 2440, so I usually just extend it up all the way and just say, you know, there we go. And it works pretty well on this radio for, for a tri-band radio for 2 meters, 220, and 440. So, But that's the antenna I've got over here. And this is the, the stock Kenwood antenna on the D75 right there. I would love to put a signal stick on here, but signal stick, last I checked, signal stick does not make a tri-band antenna. But Smiley antennas does. And you can get a full range of Smiley antennas, ham radio, GMRS radio, different band, commercial band radios, Full range of smiley antennas at bettersaferadio.com. And I want to give a special shout out to Main Trading Company. I got this D75 from Main Trading Company. I partnered with them for this video. I am on their email list. I'll put a link to their email list in the description below. Be sure to check that out because I, I was laying in bed one night and I got an email saying, hey, I've got some D75s in stock, but they're going to go fast. And I ordered one immediately and I had it in two days. So special shout out and thanks to Richard for that uh, over at Main Trading Company. MTCradio.com is their website. All right, so let's go around the radio. You can see the face of each radio here, the front of each radio. I'm going to use my stylus from my uh, uh, tiny essay. So this one here, this is the D74, and this one actually has more color in the keys than this one does. So I was, I actually like the color scheme on the 74 better than the 75. This one has red around the uh, the enter and, and the tr what, what we would call the trackpad. Okay, and it has yellow and white on all the buttons. This one is blue and white on all the buttons, and there's no colors around the trackpad. So other than that, it's it's pretty much the same. You've got digital dual or digital and mode right there, low and menu right there. So if you hit function, it's it activates the blue part, and then if you hit the um, just the button by itself, it activates whatever the white part is. So like like we're in VFO mode right there. Put it in VFO mode like that. I can go to VFO mode. I can go to memory mode, and I can go back to VFO mode like that. Just a single click of the button. I can change tone here. Uh, that's CT. DCS, uh, D slash zero digital uh, DCS out, I think that is, and then turn it off and then back to tone, tone squelch. But if I want to set the tone, I have to go function and T, T select, and then I can set the tone squelch right there. And that's it says T select on the eight key and it says tone on the eight key. And again, the, uh, the white text on the key is the single press and the blue text is the function plus single single press. 
So that's how you do that. Around the side here, I still have the original. I was always curious about this uh, rubberized covering that goes over the side of the radio, uh, but I still have my, this is still the original one on my D74. So I've never changed that out, never had to do anything with that. The main difference here is that uh, this is micro USB right here, and this is DCN 13.8 uh, volts right there with your proprietary plug, okay? And this is uh, USB-C, of course, right there, and 13.8 volts worth of proprietary plug. I believe, I, I should have checked that before I, I, I rolled the camera. Okay, I went and grabbed my charger. This is the Kenwood charger for the D75. The, the one for the D74, which I don't know where it's at. I've got it somewhere. I don't know where it's at, though. It's the one that I cut and put power poles between the tip and the end here. But this one says output is 12 volts at 0 0.5 amps. So it should work fine, and it fits fine in this. Uh, this is the D74 here, and it fits fine in that, that socket. So it'll go in both radios. So the, 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 the charger, the AC chargers are interchangeable between the two radios, so that's good. But this one does have USB-C. Now I tried to plug it, This the battery was pretty much dead when I got this radio and I tried to plug it up to USB-C and it did charge it, but it was very slow. So I ended up plugging this up anyway. The 12 volt charge is gonna be a lot faster. That is basically the only difference between the side is that this port right here is USB-C. This port right here is micro USB. I think at one point in time I had said in a video that you could charge this one via micro USB. And I think that that is wrong. Uh, you cannot charge this one via micro USB that I have found. I was thinking that my, my, my ICOM ID52, you can charge via micro USB, but this one does not charge via micro USB. So this really, the only thing that this port is good for is for uh, like data transfer, like programming software, uh, firmware updates and whatnot. So anyway, so there's the back of it right there. Same battery pretty much. It's got um, Kenwood uh, KNB 75LA, which is a 7.4 volt, 1820 milliamp hour battery. Uh, that's the D75. The D74 has same battery, KNB 75L, same battery, 1800 milliamp hours, 1820 milliamp hours. This one, so the D75 has 20 milliamp hours larger battery than this one. So basically the same battery. There's that. And then this side over here, has the power button is round instead of square. The monitor and PTT and all that's the same. Uh, knobs on the top are the same. Volume knob is here. The the inner knob is the volume knob right here. And then the, this this one top one is the channel knob, a v, VFO knob. For those interested in uh, external antennas, it's an SMA female on top of the radio and an SMA male on the antenna itself. So that's a walk around the entire thing of the radio. So I'm going to go into the menus. I'm going to see what the menus look like on each one. There's uh, nine items you can get in here. And it, and this is the same nine items. So on this 74, it's uh, TXRX, top left, TXRX, memory is next, audio file is next, far left on the second row is GPS, middle of the second row is APRS, digital is the far right on the second row, FM broadcasting, micro SD card, and configuration. I have noticed a couple of different things on this one. If I can remember where they are, let's see, back, let's go there. I think it's on APRS, actually. So if you look right here, this one has a digipeat option, which we knew that. We knew that the D75 had digipeat capabilities. So if you go into the APRS menu, hit menu, go into APRS, and scroll down to the second to the last thing, which is menu 5-8 uh, five, something, 5-8, five, zero is that menu this that menu does not exist in the d74 the d75 has the digipeat so you can set this up as a digipeter and you can set it up uh if you've got like say you've got well say you've got both of these radios you can set this one up as a digipeter in your vehicle with an external antenna and have it digipeat your aprs signal that's beaconing from this radio or from your yezu ft5 or some other aprs capable ht perhaps the any tone 878 and you can, uh, you can digipeat signals uh, farther out away from your zone, wherever you are, with, a, with an antenna that works better than the antenna on the radio itself, because this one has a, a, a digipeat function. The digipeat and the USB-C were the main differences between the, and it seems like there was a third difference too, and I can't remember, but you can go back and watch the video I will post right there. <laughs> I had to point that way, right there, because we did an interview with Kenwood at Hamvention of 2023, and they told us all about this radio. So, so far, I'm pr I'm pretty impressed. I wish that the micro SD card. I'll show you guys that real quick if you want to see it. I think that uh, I think I put it in this one. 
So yeah, so here's your micro SD card right there. Micro SD card is not recognized. Of course not, I just ejected it. Thank you very much. So this is, it's easy to back up your stuff on both of these radios. So if we go in here to, this is the D74 I'm messing with right now. So in here, micro SD card, export. Okay, export right there. Let's just do repeater list only. Uh, and I'm gonna click okay, saving. Depending on how many repeaters in here, this might be really fast, and this might take a few seconds or up to a minute or so. I've got a pretty good number of repeaters saved in here. There we go. Information saving the data is completed. Okay, so we click OK, and then uh, and then it's important to do this. Okay, it's important to uh, menu, go back in the SD card and click on unmount, uh, execute. Okay. Okay, now I can eject the card safely. Okay, so like that, right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take the same card and put it into the D75. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna go to menu, micro SD card, there, and I'm gonna try import of repeater list only. No file is found. So the fo the file format, the file structure, something, one whatever is different. You can't import from one to the other, which is disappointing. I was really kind of hoping to move everything from here over to here, but uh, such is life, and uh, that's not going to happen. So, anyway, I will be carrying this radio to what? Well, first of all, let me ask you guys what other videos would you like to see about setup on this radio? We can do one with the programming software. I'm going to get a cable. I mean, this is just a USB cable, right? A USB-C cable, I should say. You should be able to take a standard USB-C cable. Maybe a PD. I'm not sure if it requires a PD cable or not. I wouldn't think it does. It might be a little bit faster charging with a PD cable. I have to test that. We can do the programming software, and we can do some. See if we can do some import and export from the D74 to the D75 programming software. We can try that. I want to do a setup of APRS on it. In fact, you know what? I have not set up APRS on this one yet. So let me um, let me switch back over here because I would like to set up APRS because this is what I will be beaconing from during the weekend of Orlando Hamcation. All right, let's go. Um, let's see. Menu, APRS, basic settings, my call sign. Okay, what is my call sign, guys? Y'all remember? I don't remember sometimes. Okay, let's hit enter. There we go. Okay, now my call sign. I've got icon set as Kenwood. You can uh, you can switch that here. Yeah, uh, Yagi at QTH. Okay, cool. Kenwood radio, and it gives you it shows you right there. You can kind of see the little icon right there in the camera. Hopefully, you can see that RV. There's a good one. Van, Jeep, truck. Truck 18-wheeler, that's cool. Police, ambulance, fire trucks, you can do all kinds of stuff here. I just chose Kenwood because why not? This is the only Kenwood uh, APRS radio that I'll have at this show, so I'm just going to choose Kenwood. Position comment, in-service returning, you've got all these custom ones here. So I, I have yet to figure out how to edit this custom one. I, and I haven't read, the, I haven't, I've just tinkered with the menu, really. Status text, and we can go here, and we can say... You know what? I'm going to say, uh, for status text, I'm going to say you have to hit enter to, to go into that menu. So, Hamcation, where's the I? I keep losing it with all the different text on the on the buttons. Just haven't gotten used to it yet. Hamcation, four. Okay, use. There we go. So, text, Hamcation 2024. That's where we're going to be. Back, back. Okay, so status text one, good. Pack, uh, packet path, I didn't change anything here. This is just what it was set to by default. Type is new in, wide one on, total hops two, wide one dash one, and wide two dash one. Okay, data speed is 1200. You don't want to really change that to 9600. Most people don't use 9600. So data band is A, DCD sense is busy, transmit delay is 200 milliseconds, APRS lock, uh, frequency. I've, none of these were checked for APRS locked when I got the radio. So I checked the box for frequency. I don't really know what I don't know what know what the differences are. So, but I don't see anywhere in here where you can change this and I I I I'll, I'll go read in the manual. So we'll do a more in-depth uh, video later. But position comment is custom 0. Well where where do you set what custom 0 is? I don't know where to set that. So we'll we'll go back uh, and do that. So smart be it's got smart beaconing Low speed, um, low high is 5 to 70 miles an hour. Okay, so you can adjust that if you want to. Fast rate. Here we go. Okay, that's good stuff there. Beacon transmit control method is auto. There's that QSY information. Status is off. Okay, that's fine. Message notification, digipeat, others, PC output. Okay, good. So basic settings and, okay, and GPS basic settings. You have to see G built-in GPS is off. So... 
if I turn built-in GPS on, I believe that will turn me on to uh, now GPS. It says GPS locked. So we're going to let that do its thing and see if, uh, and I don't know what the dash is. I don't know what the dash is because I'm going to have, oops. Oh, that's AM. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, upper, lower sideband and AM, it'll receive all that stuff. CW, it'll receive all that stuff like the old one would. So you could receive HF, uh, upper, lower sideband, CW, and everything on the D74. D75 will do that too. So now I have to go in there and figure out how to turn APRS on because I've got it set. So I'm going to tinker around with that a little bit more. But you guys tell me because I haven't read I haven't read the manual yet. So I'm going to go into the manual. I'm going to see uh, basic setup of APRS. It'll be I'll be beaconing at the Rosen Inn International Hotel in Orlando this weekend. And while I'm at the show and while while we're at POTA on Thursday, I'll be doing all that this weekend. So send me a message or whatnot. Let me know if you're there and uh, hope to see you in Hamcation this weekend. Check out the links in the description below for a main trading company. Special shout out once again to Richard uh, for uh, sending me this email. Let me know it's here. I mean, I got his email blast. He didn't send me an email. I got his email blast. I bought it and he sent it to me. I had it two days later. All good. So 73 guys. See you guys in Hamcation 2024.